In the New Testament, not much has changed with regards to slavery. Jesus doesn't preach against slavery, neither does the Apostle Paul. In fact, Paul encourages slavery. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. Christians who are slaves should give their masters full respect so that the name of God and his teaching will not be shamed. If your master is a Christian, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. You should work all the harder because you are helping another believer by your efforts. Teach these truths, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. It seems slavery was still very much part of the culture. For a Christian to continue to defend God's actions on this issue, I would have to honestly say it's a case of cognitive dissonance. The concept of slavery clashes with the supposed character of God. So many Christians push it to the back of their mind and try to explain it with reasons such as it wasn't truly slavery as we know it, uh, I'm not a scholar so I don't know the whole cultural context, and God's ways are not our ways, we shouldn't question him. For many Christians, feelings trump reason. I had a life-changing experience with Jesus Christ. So you can say whatever you like about the Old Testament, but I know God is real. And when I get to heaven, I can ask him all the things about the Bible that I don't understand. Just know that the Lord has a reason for everything. Do you believe the Bible contains the moral foundations for humanity? Can we be moral without God? In the case of slavery, mankind had to be moral in spite of God. We abolish slavery on our own without any divine commandment. Listen to this. In the United States during the 19th century, some Christians taught that slavery is biblical. With men from the North, I have observed for many years a palpable ignorance of the divine will in reference to the institution of slavery. I have seen but a few who made the Bible their study that had obtained a knowledge of what it did reveal on this subject. Of late, their denunciation of slavery as a sin is loud and long. I propose, therefore, to examine the sacred volume briefly, and if I am not greatly mistaken, I shall be able to make it appear that the institution of slavery has received, in the first place, first, the sanction of the Almighty in the patriarchal age, second, that it was incorporated into the only national constitution which ever emanated from God, third, that its legality was recognized and its relative duties regulated by Jesus Christ in his kingdom and fourth, that it is full of mercy. Reverend Thomas Stringfellow, 1841. If we prove that domestic slavery is, in the general, a natural and necessary institution, we remove the greatest stumbling block to belief in the Bible. For whilst text, detached and torn from their context, may be found for any other purpose, none can be found that even militates against slavery. The distorted and forced construction of certain passages for this purpose by abolitionists, if employed as a common rule of construction, would reduce the Bible to a mere allegory to be interpreted to suit every vicious taste and wicked purpose. George Fitzhugh, 1857. He actually believed that using the Bible to oppose slavery was a wicked thing to do. That's how much he believed God supported slavery. But then we turn to the Christians in the northern United States and hear what they have to say. The slaveholder's rule contradicts this fundamental truth of God's word that God has made of one blood all the nations of men, and if of one blood, they are of equal blood. Jonathan Blanchard, pastor, abolitionist. So in the south, the Bible was being used to defend slavery, while in the north, the Bible was used to condemn slavery. Why is God playing both sides of the fence? Thanks for watching.